which is displayed. The fuel gauge is part of the display in the center of the instrument panel, with a series of bars indicating how much fuel is in the tank. Directly below the speedometer is the odometer that indicates how far the car has been driven. By pushing the trip auto button on the trip monitor panel, you can select either the trip odometer or the regular odometer. The word trip appears to let you know when you've selected the trip reading. The trip monitor also includes controls for determining fuel economy, with readouts appearing in the center cluster. Pressing the instant average button lets you choose either instant fuel economy or average fuel economy. The reading shows up to the left of the fuel gauge. Press the range button and you'll see a readout on how far you can expect to go with the available fuel. The readout is displayed to the left of the fuel gauge. The fuel reset button should be pushed whenever fuel is added so that the system is reset to provide accurate readings. The tachometer, indicating engine revolutions per minute divided by 1,000, is located on the left side of the instrument cluster. In other words, if the tachometer reads 3, the engine is turning 3,000 revolutions per minute. To the left of the trip monitor panel are a series of four dials providing important operating information. The leftmost gauge alerts you to any problem with engine oil pressure. If pressure falls into the cross-hatched area while at idle and stays there, it means oil is not circulating through the engine properly. Next is the engine oil temperature gauge. If the oil temperature approaches the cross-hatched area and stays there for some time, it's too high and the engine oil level should be checked. Third is the engine coolant gauge. Again, a reading in the cross-hatched area could indicate a possible problem with the engine cooling system that requires immediate attention. If that ever happens, your new full-color Corvette owner's manual shows exactly what to do. The fourth dial is the voltmeter, which indicates the level of electrical voltage being produced. This should be in the middle of the gauge most of the time. Corvette instrumentation includes a number of warning lights to indicate possible problems with one of the car's functions. Clustered around the instrument panel are specific warnings for the brake system, doors ajar, oil and temperature gauges, and security system. If one of them stays on, check your owner's manual right away to see what to do. There's also a system's problems warning light to alert you to any problems with a number of Corvette systems that are constantly being monitored electronically. Okay, the, the, the 90 Corvette has ABS electronically controlled. It has uh, uh, all kinds of microcomputers throughout the car. Uh, I am wondering how a customer, how an owner knows whether these systems are all working, if any of them are not working up to par. Uh, it's a very complex automobile. Uh, how can you be assured the thing's uh, working right? Well, most of this is going on, Rich, out of the sight of the driver. He doesn't really need to know what's going on. But I'll just use one example to get us started. In the airbag system, the system is continuously self-checking itself by sending low voltage signals around through all its wiring, uh, through the sensors, through the airbag, module itself and it, it's keeping track all through the life of the system exactly how's it doing. So it's, it's asking are you okay questions of all the external circuits and uh, if things aren't okay it turns on a light that tells the driver to uh, go after servicing that system. But uh, what that really has accomplished for us is a system that uh, is smart. Uh, the ABS, though, there's a system you use every day. Well, not, not the actual ABS system, but the brakes. How do you know that if you need ABS, it's actually working? Well, every time you fire up the car and then put it in gear and drive away, the f when you go through about three miles an hour, you'll hear a, a noise behind you in the Corvette, and that's the ABS system cycling the pump that's part of that circuit. While it's cycling the pump, it's also going through a, a total self-check of the wheel sensors, of the electronic package, uh, and everything else associated with it. So whether you use the ABS system in your driving daily or not, it's checking itself and making sure that it's working right. 
and of course if it isn't it'll tell you about it well it, you know the, the ABS really breaks the uh, splits the brake system up into uh, three separate systems each front wheel individually and the rear wheels together because of the pods attraction and the differential uh, you, you really can't control each rear wheel separately because they're, they're sort of locked together so it's like having three little brake pedals in the car and the computer controls and it it will try to give you steerability and, and, and uh, the best stopping distance under all conditions. Uh, the split mu condition is, is a, you know, one of the bad ones, but also a high speed braking in a turn, which you could get into with a sports car that's capable of fairly high uh, cornering uh, coefficients like uh, the Corvette is where it's about 1G. Let's move across the instrument panel now to the driver information center located above the heating and air conditioning controls. It provides important safety and maintenance facts, including warning lights for low coolant level, inflatable restraint, battery charging system, anti-lock brake system, engine service, and optional systems such as low tire pressure warning system and selective ride control. You just talked about selective ride. I've driven the car with uh, the FX3 package um, I think it's quite impressive what it is capable of. What benefits do you see for the owner? How, how should he use it and uh, uh, what good is it to him? Well, what, we try, what the FX3 uh, selective ride system does is uh, allows you to sort of dial in the ride that uh, suits your, your frame of mind. Uh, we, we have a switch on the console that's marked touring, sport, and performance. And in the uh, touring mode, uh, the shock absorbers are, are uh, have their lowest uh, damping control and the, allows the car to ride fairly smoothly. Uh, a, a sort of a traditional floaty, almost floaty passenger car ride, but still enough wheel control to, uh, to be safe. So I understand that each of these positions has within it six uh, variable ride settings that change with speed automatically. So in, in, in the softest position, we have a nice boulevard ride. Uh, as you go more and more quickly, it firms up to compensate for the speed, even in the, uh, uh, in the touring position. And then the, the sport and competition do the same thing. Six built-in changes, uh, steps, if you will. For 1990, all Corvettes are equipped with a driver's side supplemental inflatable restraint system or airbag, and the emphasis is on supplemental. Seat belts still must be worn to ensure proper driver and passenger protection. The biggest um, new technology in the 90 car, of course, is the airbag system. And that is invisible added protection to the customer. Of course, we do request and demand that the customer wears his belts at all times, but he does have added protection. Uh, the first thing the customer will notice about the 90 interior is the specific steering wheel. The, the wheel horn pad is a larger because it houses the module, the airbag module. There's a specific column with a coil that ties and interfaces the electrical in the column to the airbag module. He will also notice knee bolsters for added protection uh, for the femur. So the, the customer uh, will get invisible added protection in the 90 Corvette. This light on the driver information center should come on for about five seconds when the key is turned to run and then go out. That indicates the system is working. The supplemental inflatable restraint system and seat and shoulder belt provide driver protection in front end collisions. Crash sensors and an accelerometer measure the force of the collision. If it's hard enough, they send a signal to the system so that within a fraction of a second, the airbag is inflated to help restrain the driver. It then deflates in less time than it takes to blink your eye. The system has undergone testing in a variety of situations to ensure top-notch reliability. But again, it's a supplemental device and can't take the place of proper seat belt use. On the left side of the steering column is Corvette's smart switch that controls turn signals, lane change indicator, headlight high beams, windshield wipers and washers, and the cruise control system. Light controls are on the left side of the instrument panel. Turning the control knob one stop to the right turns on parking lights, side marker lights, tail lights, and the license plate light. Moving the control to the far right turns on the headlights. 
If the ignition key is removed while the headlights are left on, a warning chime will sound. Instrument panel lighting and interior lights are controlled 